Hey, what's up? What's going on? Welcome to another episode of English with Dane, a podcast designed for you to improve your English. As always, I'm your host, Dane, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at English with Dane. This episode is different from the last two because I'm going to talk about a couple of headlines, titulares, that caught my eye. One is about an interesting new law in the Philippines, and the other one has to do with a new TV show that is quickly making waves. So let's start the show. You are listening to the 20th episode of English with Dane. Hit it. Okay, we have officially started the show, so let's get into some headlines. The first one is from two days ago, so the 29th of May, and it's from the Philippines. It says, New Filipino law requires every student to plant 10 trees if they want to graduate. No difficult vocabulary there, so let's keep reading. The Philippines, a tropical island nation in the Pacific, will now require by law that all graduating students from elementary school all the way to college plant 10 trees each before they can graduate. The bill or law called the Graduation Legacy for the Environment Act was approved in the House and is now being sent to the Philippine Senate for action. Then it says, proponents of the law see this as an opportunity for the Filipino youth to help tackle climate change and build a greener environment for their generation. To tackle means to take down, all right, derribar or placar in Spanish. In this context, it means to fight against. So this new law is intended to help tackle climate change and build a greener environment. Let's keep going. It is estimated that over the course of one generation, the bill will be responsible for 525 billion trees planted. That's billion with a B. This comes from over 12 million students graduating from elementary school each year, 5 million from high school, and 500,000 from college, equaling 175 million trees planted each year. Then they give us a bit more context, and it says, the Philippines consists of 7,641 islands in Southeast Asia. Remember, the S in islands is silent, okay? We don't say Iceland's. We only say Iceland for the country. Across those islands, deforestation has been a primary environmental issue. Widespread development and agriculture have led to a significant drop in forested areas across the Philippines. Through the 20th Forested areas in the Philippines have decreased from 70% all the way to 20%. And it is estimated that 24.2 million acres of forests were cut down from 1934 to 1988, primarily from logging. Logging is, of course, the industry of cutting down trees to produce timber, right? To get wood, spelled L-O-G-G-I-N-G. -G -G. I like this law. I think... It's a great thing to do, and I'm sure it will become a part of the ceremonial aspect of graduating. People will start filming their 10th tree being planted, and it will become something that is ingrained in the culture. So, solid initiative. I applaud it. But I bet, apuesto que, I bet there are going to be a bunch of college students planting 10 trees the day before their graduation so they can receive their diplomas. But nonetheless, sin embargo, I think it's a great new law. Two years ago, I think I saw some news about India also making a big effort to plant trees. And they set a new world record for largest amount of trees planted in 12 hours. They planted like 60 or 70 million trees. That's a lot of trees, but I think they had around one and a half million volunteers helping them. 
Okay, you can find that article on Forbes.com, by the way. All right, a friend of mine sent me this next headline, and it's about a new TV show on HBO. And I have a few things to say about it. The headline reads, HBO's Chernobyl is currently the highest rated TV show, beating Breaking Bad and The Wire. This is a good moment for a quick vocabulary reminder. We use the word currently for actualmente and actually for the word realmente. Okay, let's keep reading. The argument over the best TV show of all time is one that can last, que puede durar, until the end of time, with many votes being cast for classics like The Wire and The Sopranos or for Breaking Bad. A new drama has entered the competition, though, in the form of HBO's Chernobyl, which is currently the top-rated TV show on IMDb, beating the hits mentioned above. At the time of this writing, Chernobyl is sitting atop everything else on the list of IMDb's top 250 TV shows, where it's enjoying a score of 9.6. Okay, I have a few issues with this headline, and maybe I'm being negative because they're saying that it's a better show than some of my favorite shows of all time. But IMDb ratings, like all other ratings, can be misleading. So let's take a closer look for a second. It's important to take into account, tomar en cuenta, the amount of individual votes each show received, because you can't compare a show that has been around for many years and has around 100 episodes with a miniseries that came out this month and has five episodes. So far, Chernobyl has a score of 9.7 on IMDb. The article says 9.6, but my information is more recent because I just checked IMDb 20 minutes ago. Anyway, it received a score of 9.7 from around 86,000 individual ratings. In comparison, Game of Thrones has a score of 9.4 but from 1.5 million individual ratings. And that's over eight years. So they have maintained that level throughout the years. Breaking Bad has a score of 9.5 out of 10, and they received 1.2 million individual votes. So you could say that Chernobyl being at the top of the list, beating established shows is very misleading. By the way, the top 10 list of highest rated TV shows on IMDb looks like this. Number one, Chernobyl, 9.7. Number two, Planet Earth 2, 9.5. Then Band of Brothers, 9.4. Planet Earth, 9.4. Number five is Breaking Bad, 9.4. Then we have Game of Thrones, 9.4. The Wire, 9.3. Our Planet, 9.3. Cosmos, 9.2. And at number 10, Blue Planet 2 with another 9.2. So a surprising amount of documentaries or documentary style shows on that list. Five out of 10, actually. Anyway, I watched the first episode of Chernobyl to see if it really deserved to be on the top of that list, even if only for a short time. And I thought it was good. I enjoyed it and it kept me entertained even though I'm already familiar with the events that took place or happened on that day in 1986. I thought it was well filmed and I liked the shots, Los Planos. They didn't blow me away like other shows, but I thought they were solid. The show does a good job of transporting you to the location and I think it's a very believable depiction. Even though I enjoyed it though, the show has one big flaw, in my opinion. So one major problem or weakness. It's not in Russian. I know Chernobyl is in the Ukraine, but it was a part of the USSR at the time. So I'm assuming that it would have taken place in Russian. I don't know, write to me if I'm wrong. But that was a big issue for me. This is probably something that divides the audience. Some people don't mind reading subtitles, but other people prefer to hear it in a language they understand. Personally, I'm in favor of subtitles because I think it makes the show more believable in general. So I was disappointed with that. 
I still enjoyed it, but the problem is that the names of the characters are Russian or Ukrainian names, and it feels strange when they call each other and then speak with a British accent or that neutral English accent that they use in shows sometimes. Something that I liked about the show is that they showed us the people in the city not knowing what was happening, right? Not knowing what to do. They look out of their windows and they see a strange glow, un brillo. And some of them go out into the street to see what's happening. I think this is an effective technique because as a viewer, you immediately identify with them and it makes you feel this tension throughout the episode. And I think they made a good choice showing that perspective. The acting, I thought, was pretty good. I believed the characters and I empathized with them. I put myself in their shoes. So I guess, so I guess it was effective in that aspect too. I've only seen one episode though, so I can't really judge completely yet. I'll get back to you when I've watched more. Who knows, maybe I end up loving the show. Me termine encantando. If you've watched the show, let me know if you agree or disagree. Write to me at English with Dane. Okay, that's the show for today. Subscribe to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you listen to the show. And stay tuned for episode 21 of English with Dane. Remember, the best way to support the show is to share it. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave a rating and a review. Okay, talk soon. Bye-bye.